Hi friends, this is Raj Shekhar, a GATE faculty for electrical machines. Today in this video, we are going to discuss about why the transformer rating represents in KVRVA, why not in KW. Generally, the transformer operation mainly depends on temperature. The transformer operation mainly depends on temperature. The temperature mainly depends on losses. The temperature mainly depends on losses. In our transformer, we have a two types of losses. One is the constant losses and other one is the variable losses. Nothing but core losses and copper losses. The core losses mainly depends on voltage and the copper losses mainly depends on current. Copper losses depends on current and core losses depends on voltage. Nothing but the losses depends on volt amperes. The losses depends on volt amperes and the transformer operation also only depends on temperature which is depends on volt amperes. That's why for easy analysis the transformer rating also represents in volt amperes or kilo volt amperes. Volt amperes are kilo volt amperes. Okay, so generally the transformer operation depends on temperature and temperature depends on losses and losses depends on volt amperes. That's why the transformer rating also represents in volt amperes. And you have to remember transformer rating as well as alternator alternator rating these two ratings represents in kva or va kva or va other than this dc machines and synchronous motor dc machines and synchronous motor induction motor or induction machines induction machines its rating represents in kilowatts or watts. DC machines, induction machines and synchronous motor rating represents in kilowatts or watts. Transformer and alternator. Alternator nothing but synchronous generator represents in KVA or VA. Remember this, right? If DC supply given to a transformer, then what happens? For example, if a AC supply given to a transformer, if AC supply given to a transformer, then what happens sir? Some EMF will induce us in this winding. And due to mutual induction, another EMF induces in this winding. Yes or no? For example, here 200 volts is given. For example, my winding having 10 ohms of impedance. 10 ohms of impedance. Okay. For example, here some current flowing and here some EMF induces here. For example, 150 volts induces here. What is the, what is the loop equation? 200 volts is equals to 10 into I plus 150. Here impedance and some current. So what is 10 into I is equals to 50 and I is equals to 5 amperes. For example, 5 amperes is rating of my winding. Rating of my winding is 5 amperes. Now, I am giving same 200 volts DC supply. I am giving same 200 volts DC supply. When DC supply given to a transformer, here conductors are stationary. Conductors are stationary and magnetic flux also stationary, constant magnetic flux we are giving, not AC, this is DC. <coughs> is there any relative motion between them? 
there is no relative motion between them. If there is no relative motion, what is the EMF induced here? If there is no relative motion, there is no EMF induced here. Then tell me what is the loop equation? 200 volts is equals to 10 into I plus 0. Then what is I? I is equals to 20 amperes. I is equals to 20 amperes. What is my rating? Actually 5 amperes. How much current flowing through the winding? 20 amperes of current flowing through the winding. Then what winding says? Winding says I am sorry. Are you okay? If 20 amperes flows through the winding, this primary winding gets burns out. This primary winding gets burns out. Then there is no operation. And there is no any problem for the secondary winding. Here, when DC supply given to the transformer, the problem is only for primary winding. There is no problem for secondary winding. No problem for secondary winding. Okay? So, when DC supply given to a transformer, there is no relative motion. No relative motion. If there is no relative motion, no EMF in the primary winding. If no EMF in the primary winding, no mutual induction. No mutual induction. If there is no mutual induction, no EMF in the secondary winding. No EMF in the secondary winding. I am due to high currents. I am due to high currents. Due to high currents, primary winding damages. Due to high currents, primary winding burns out or primary winding damages. I will give you a question. For example, A 400 volts single phase 50 H transformer. Transformer given by or simply take 200 volts. 200 volts single phase 50 H transformer given by DC supply. DC supply. Then what happened? A 200 volt single phase 50 H transformer given by DC supply. Then what happened? Ultimately, primary winding damages. Ultimately, primary winding damages. This is 100% correct answer. For example, if they ask you a question, if they ask you a question, a 200 volt single phase 50 H transformer given by given by 20 volts DC supply given by 20 volts DC supply then what happened then what happened 20 volts DC supply given so here I am giving 20 volts DC supply here I am giving 20 volts DC supply the voltage induced in the winding is zero voltage induced in the winding is zero now tell me what is the current what is the current 2 amperes yes sir for 2 amperes is the primary winding damages is the secondary winding damages no winding damages no winding damages no winding damages for low dc voltages if rated DC voltage given, then winding burns out, no doubt at all. But if no winding damages, when small DC voltage is given to a transformer. But here the thing is that there is no voltage induced in the primary, no voltage induced in the secondary. No relative motion, no EMF, no mutual induction, no EMF. But if the voltage is less, there is no damages. If the voltage is equals to rated voltage, then only the primary winding damages. Are you okay? If this is applied given to a transformer, what happens? Alright? Thank you, sir.